I hear someone at the gate. They must need alms and charity, and as queen it's my job to go and dispense this to the poor of the realm and those who come asking for help. But after that, I must go to the herb garden and make sure the herbs are dried and stored for winter. It's very important to have things which are needed for those people who are not well off and who are become ill, as well as my husband, who often needs the odd painkiller. Some hemlock or some mandrake will, will solve this one. And then the children are making a noise. What are they doing? Where is the tutor? The girls must be learning music and dancing, or no one will marry them. Especially poor little Egidia, who has terrible marks from her smallpox. Possibly a convent might be the best answer there. I don't know. Anyway, we, the, the uh, castle is, is cold in the winter, so I must make sure we have the herbs and we have the coal. Oh, my husband is calling me. He must need me to entertain the Flemish ambassador. It's very important to keep him happy. And I will have the musicians here who I've given patronage to. And that will keep him happy. He will feel good about life. And he will have a good meal with lots of venison. So I must fly. In the medieval times, queens and sometimes noble women were ladies still in waiting. These ladies would perform minor duties for the queen, such as helping her get dressed, I would take a bath, reading to her, embroider with her, and playing games with her. These women were normally noble themselves and were more companions to the Queen than they were servants. They would also attend special events with the Queen such as feasts and dances. They were also finely dressed, well respected and normally lived in court. Tall guy Dave here, I'm up at the castle as you can see, just getting my exercise maintaining my social distancing at all times. I'm going to tell you about a guy called the Constable. Now the Constable is always a very experienced soldier. He's often landed gentry, sometimes knighted himself. And his job is to provide the military protection for the Lord and Lady of the Castle, or the King and Queen in our case. He'd often escort them on activities outside, so hunting expeditions, that sort of thing. And he's also responsible for raising the military men to enable the king to administer justice as required and also raise soldiers uh, for time of warfare. Within the castle itself, people under his control would be the armourers, uh, the men at arms, so the soldiers in the castle, uh, the porter, and also people like the guards or door wards as they were called. Hello, I'm Marcia, an archaeologist. Who volunteers at Dundonald Castle. I'll be describing some of the roles you might expect to find in a medieval castle. Masons and builders. A really big castle could take years to complete and needed an army of builders. A master mason was in charge. He planned everything just like an architect would do today. Masons shaped and fitted the huge stones and carpenters would cut the wood. Local people would do the digging, fetching and carrying. Masons would leave their own individual marks on sections of the building that they, they had built to identify where they had worked. Minstrels were medieval musicians. They would sing and perform music for the court to enjoy and dance to. They would have played several instruments such as early woodwinds like the flute and stringed instruments like the lute and the fiddle. The king and queen at Dindona Castle would only have employed the best and most well-renowned minstrels to play at their feasts. in giant kitchens to provide food for the members of the castle's household and staff. At the head of this group would have been the castle's cook. This would have actually been a fairly important job and while some castles had their own cooks which would stay there all the time, 
Sometimes kings and nobles brought their cooks with them as they traveled from castle to castle. Unlike peasants who cooked mainly food that they could grow or catch in their local area, nobles and kings imported food from all over Europe and even Asia. So a castle's cook would need to know not only how to cook with all of these ingredients, but also how to make the food beautiful to present to the lords or the king's guests. Some popular dishes eaten by the rich included roasted boar, peacock, and candied fruits. Another important member of the royal household was the king's steward. The steward would reside permanently in the castle and he's responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the royal household. So under his command would be the cooks, the servants, the musicians, the minstrels, people in charge of the wardrobes, Anything that involves making sure that the castle is run properly and it's a nice, safe and comfortable place for the king when he returns to Dundonald, his favourite castle. Hello, I'm Neil and I'm a blacksmith. The role of blacksmith was very common in medieval times and most cities and villages would have had one. The blacksmith's primary job was to make and repair tools, which was done by heating and shaping metal. Blacksmiths worked primarily with iron and made everyday necessities such as tools and horseshoes, although they also made some weapons and armour. Other kinds of smiths used different kinds of metal to create different items. Armourers and swordsmiths worked primarily with steel and specialised in creating armour and weapons, while goldsmiths and silversmiths worked with precious metals and made things like jewellery and ornaments. If you lived in the castle and wanted a new pair of shoes, you went to the cordwainer. This was the person who made shoes out of new leather and was different to the cobbler who only mended old shoes. In fact, it was against the law for cordwainers to mend shoes and for cobblers to make shoes. This law was to protect both cordwainers and cobblers from losing work to each other. Cordwainers made the best shoes from very soft leather called cordwain, bought from Cordoba in Spain. It was the best leather for making shoes by the turn shoe method, that is, making the shoes inside out and then turning them to wear them. Both men and women wore the same types of shoe in those days, but the wealthier you were, the longer the point or poulain on the front of your shoe. The wealthiest people, like the king and queen, might have points on their shoes that were over two feet long. Cordwainers sometimes decorated poulains with silver and jewels and often attached a cord to the poulain which tied around the leg to hold it up. Ordinary people often wore no shoes in the summer, but in winter they might wear old, hand-me-down shoes from the castle, which would have been mended and altered by the local cobbler to make them fit for work. Spit Turner was one of the lowest positions in the castle. Not only did it not pay much, but also would not have been a position respected by many other members of the castle community. Spit turners were often young boys just pulled from the local village who would spend all day standing next to a large fire and turning a handle which would rotate the meat to ensure that the meat cooked on all sides. This job would have had long hours, low pay, and would have been a very difficult job physically and it would have been very hot and very uncomfortable. Other lowly members of the kitchen staff were the scullions who were responsible for washing the dishes.